Hi, my name's Kathy Millett, and this week we're painting tarmac. So this week's all about painting our dock, and what kind of colour do we want? Well, it really depends on the dirt in your area, which is going to get spread all across that tarmac, and how old it is, and the older it is, the paler it gets. So it's definitely worth getting photos of the bit you want to model. Looking at them, copying them, looking at how tarmac cracks and how weeds and other things sort of build up around the edges. And you really cannot be looking at the real thing for this because this is the finishing touch to the actual work that you've done in getting the tarmac there. And if this goes wrong, your tarmac will just look a bit meh. One thing I am keen on doing is showing the difference between dry tarmac and wet tarmac and the colour basically gets darker. So I've spent a bit of time on my layout trying to get some of the effects you can see in these photos which to me I just add a little bit of interest. I mean it's a dock area you would expect there to be a bit of water. So why paint it in the first place? Well I've done so many techniques it's looking a bit manky so it does need painting and I do find the grit especially has a little sparkle in it that just doesn't look too prototypical. So what paint am I going to use? So I'm just going to use natural and Payne's grey acrylic paints. Now I like both of those colours mixed together because it gives a warmer concrete, um, sorry a warmer tarmac colour. Um, if you use white and black you get a very cold colour and I don't think tarmac's that cold when I look at it. I mix the paint, starting with the buff titanium, the lighter colour, and adding small bits of Payne's grey until I got a colour that I wanted. And I did make it very thin because I didn't want to obscure that lovely detail, that texture that we spent ages putting on with the grit and the foam and the rust-oleum spray. And so this has no real body to it. And as a result, I did end up doing three coats. You'll also notice that I spent a bit of time wiping out my turnouts and making sure they still throw. Just if you are doing something around here and it's got to move, move it regularly while it's drying to make sure nothing seizes up. Okay, so over the week I've put three thin layers of acrylic paint on and it's gone down the gaps which were previously painted black in some places and some weren't. So I'm now having to refill my gaps with a bit of black. And you could do this with brush just as easily. I'm not worried about overspray because I actually want there to be patina and movement and it's just going to build up over time. But, you know, it could look a bit messy by the time you're done. So you just need to bear that in mind. So I've just got a black, it's Black Surface Primer by Vallejo. Great product, sprays on, sticks to stuff. And basically I've thinned it 30 drops of paint 20 drops of Vallejo thinner and 10 drops of Vallejo flow improver to stop it sticking on my nozzle because I'm going to be doing a lot of painting. Now I am making sure I paint from both sides because I'll see it from both sides it's on a peninsula and even if you're somewhere where you think someone won't see the other side just think about where you put your camera and make sure that you're never going to take a photo that will show you've not painted the insides of your track. Okay so now it looks really manky and that's fine it's okay the next coat is going to be a brown colour to go down that gap and just try and, how can I put this, rails brown not black. So the black that I've been spraying in I've been trying to get towards the bottom, the brown's going to go where you can see the rail and then overspray slightly along the track because if you look at photos the rust from the track and that dirt often leaches into the sort of pavement to the side. So I want to put a small amount of brown along just quite near the surface and along any visible trackage just so it looks a bit weathered. Now for that I'm going to use I'm going to use surface primer tracks from MIG. So I am spraying this a bit wider this time deliberately so that it goes onto the edge of the track like this. So I'm doing it from further away and just letting it mist along. Okay, so at this point you're probably thinking, oh, that looks awful. I often think that halfway through. What we're doing now is going to add the top tarmac or asphalt actual coat and what I want to do for that is get a bit of a distant mist. So we mist the colours on in layers and I'm going to put a slightly darker colour on then take it lighter and actually what I really want is a very light colour um, and I'm going to build it up in these sort of very very fine glazed layers almost. I mean they are proper paint but it's going to be quite a distance you know probably four or five inches away with the airbrush getting that distance. So 
Next coat, probably about, I'm gonna use the surface primer, the fine, sort of very, very pale, almost white gray one from Vallejo. I'm gonna add a few drops of black into, it's just the color that I want. And then I'm gonna um, use 20 drops of thinner and 10 drops of flow improver. Okay, and I'm just gonna mist it from a distance. As you can see, I'm getting a fine sort of texture coat across the top. It's a little bit splattery, which is what you want. What you're looking to do is just build up the layers. I think you've over darkened some of these, you can easily go on. Now I've got a huge amount of area to cover. So this is going to take me a long time. Right, well, that took quite a while. I have got a big area though. So I've now got this sort of, you know, it's a little bit flatter and deader coat on here. And now what I need to do is just get a little bit of texture back in. So for that, I'm going to spray another, just the pale, pale coat at quite a high level and definitely don't flood anything and just put another layer on and just keep it quite open and fine. And then it will give it just a glaze of a slightly different color. And then that's the last thing I'm probably going to paint because the next layer will be a different product. Wow, well that's the end of my airbrushing, what a relief. Um, it has taken quite a long time to get to this stage, which in some ways is just a base coat. Um, and now we get onto the exciting bit and really make it look like a living real dock with cracks and puddles and all those exciting bits. So that's coming up next. So next up is just, what do we do about those cobbles? I wanna highlight them a little, I want to bring them out, but I don't want to be a huge, whoa, we've got cobbles. So I've got this, um, it's Tamiya XF Deck Tan. I like Tamiya, I like this colour. I use it for stone quite a bit. It's kind of a concrete colour. I do like it. And I'm just going to use that to highlight some of the high points on the cobbles. I'm just going to brush it on with a fine brush and I'm just going to highlight them all. Now you could use multiple colours for this and really go to town. I'm not going to just because, you know, I've probably got a few more of these to do than you have. Um, and also because I think it's going to get, I'm going to put a lot more layers on so it's going to get buried. So in some ways I'm doing this to differentiate them, but I don't need them to be amazingly well pulled out. Well, the paint's dried overnight, so it's on to the next layer. What's next? Cracks. Well, we need to make sure that our tarmac looks well worn and cracked. And I've got foam here and I could dent it and, and score it as I have in the past. I'm probably just gonna do it with the um, pens so it looks consistent with the card area that's harder. So the cracks, I've just got some pens. These are Spectrum Noir pens, but I, I've got pro markers and all other sorts as well. And there's a fine and a thick and they come in a selection of greys. So I'm just gonna use probably a different selection of greys just to give a bit of variety in different places. Um, some a little bit darker, some a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna go around and spend a lot of time drawing on cracks. Make sure you step back from time to time, otherwise you could end up with a bit of a mess and you've not seen the big picture. So to keep looking at it from a distance to check that it looks fine, you're not overdoing it, underdoing it. And you can have some areas with a lot, some with a little. I'm just gonna go and put a second color on now. So now what do we need to do? Well, it still looks like a painted texture. So I would normally put pigments over. If you've got a small area, go with pigments. Very easy to use. If like me, you've got a huge area, look for some unsanded grout in gray, and then you can use that instead for this. I couldn't find any unsanded grout in gray when I was looking for this, but um, I did manage to find sanded grout. So one way to deal with the sanded grout, if you've got it, is to get a pair of tights, snip the end off and put them in here and use this to get the powder out. It takes a bit longer um, than just sprinkling it on, but it gets a less sandy result. So that's what I'm gonna go and do. So it just, just takes quite a while. You don't actually need a huge amount out. Ugh. 
Tällainen. Right. So, let me just demonstrate what I do. So I've got a big fan brush and I just put it along. Not exactly rocket science. Now, before you go and do anything else, check your flangeways, check your points still throw, make sure nothing's getting gunked up. And then I just spray water on. Now, I would normally put isopropyl in the water to make it settle better. I haven't needed it because I'm using a really fine spray from quite a distance. And the reason I'm not using isopropyl alcohol is I've got foam and foam reacts to solvents. Now I haven't tested it with the isopropyl alcohol, but just be warned that before you do anything, just check you're not going to make your foam or card warp. So I'm literally just going to go and spray water all over this. Why am I not using a fixative? Well, I'm not going to rub it a lot. And to be honest, it's cement because it's grout. So it does actually have a small amount of stick when you do finally um, sort of rub it because it's got cement in there. So it'll set to some extent without glue. So one fine spray and just soak it. Not too much. Now, as you'll see, it does disappear a bit, which is good because it's looking a bit too yellow at the moment. Well, been out to McDonald's for lunch, back to do some more of the dock. It's all dried up and you can see um, occasionally there's just a little bit where it's gathered round things, um, where it's sort of pulled in and dry. I don't particularly mind. If you don't like it, then I just suggest you go over with a brush. And if I do do a, a brush on it, it, it's, it comes off a little bit and it will scuff a little bit. So this isn't a technique for when you want it to be rock solid, but I need it to be like this for my next stage. And I want that wet and dry look. So what I'm gonna do is drip on some satin varnish and where it goes through this dust, it will change its color. Much like it looked much darker now when we sprayed it with water and it dries light again. But this never dries light. And you can use matte or satin. I just got so much satin. I've got a huge bottle this big downstairs as well. And I bought some more AEK Interactive Vallejo. Um, I'm actually gonna use the Vallejo because it's the oldest one. It's sat on the side there, it's been there a while. It's a good shake and then drip it on and use a brush just to put it into a slightly more natural looking sort of um, shape. So I don't mind if these areas just look a little bit damp as if there's something long just pulled in. And what you find is that often the damp will spread along some of these cracks. So I'm just going to take it along a little bit. Okay. And it'll dry with a slight sheen. And then just because there's a little low point here, I'm going to do a, just a tease down as if it was a puddle along here. I'm just going to make sure that those um, bubbles disappear. We'll see if they don't. In a minute, they'll come back. Okay, it's dried overnight. Now, the good thing about having used acrylic is it doesn't stick that well to metal. So I'm just gonna run my thumb along the edge of all of my um, track work to clean it off. Because the next thing we need to do is make sure that our stock still runs. And occasionally I find the foam just creeps up a bit, so it's worth sometimes pushing it back down. Now, why am I not using a normal cleaner? Well, I'm not convinced that some of my um, scenery isn't proud. And because it's proud, I'm a little bit worried that it might just um, be sanded and I'll lose the paint coat and it will go down to the, the layer below, which wouldn't be ideal, especially on this foam, um, which kind of doesn't sand, it just distorts slightly. It's not breaking up the surface. But you can see the paint comes off very easily just with the, a thumbnail. And in a minute, I'll go through and hoover the, you can see I'm starting to, what I mean about the foam there, um, I'll hoover the excess off and use a toothpick just to get any bits that get stuck in the flangeways. 
then I'll test run everything again. And if it gets a little bit stuck, you can just do a um, toothpick, which will take off any other areas. I find I don't need it that much. What I'm going to do in a sec is come back and put some brown on these. Oh, I think it's enough watching me um, carve bits off track. I'm going to go and do the whole dock work now. There's quite a lot to do and um, yeah, I'm going to have a nice groove in my thumb, I think, by the end of the day. After so many layers, it's hard to believe it, but we are finally there. So here we are, the final pages sections. You can see that there's the darker redging where the um, satin varnish made it look like the um, tarmac was wet, and I really do like that effect. Um, you can also see that there's some infections in the grit, and it just adds something more exciting when you put down your box cars than having a normal, plain, bit of boring, shiny, painted tarmac. not well maybe it's too good here too but it's still not warm anyway what we'll be looking at today what am i supposed to talk about after all i'm mini n scale cathy i should say something exciting oh she's painted it Ooh, i say this was worth the trip up look at it oh isn't it good oh oh i do like it oh it was almost worth being called for not quite but almost Wow! Gosh, I mean, wow! I mean, wow! She's quite good, isn't she? Who would have thought? Get that big tail, Kathy. Anyway, enough about the dock, because you know, it's a dock, it's all that's boring. I mean, how many more months will she go on with this? So, a bit about the halo one going on downstairs. There's paint on that too. Boy, it looks amazing. I mean, like, wow, amazing. I mean, just like, wow, amazing. I mean, wow, wow. I love the creepers. A bit creepy, the creepers. And have you seen what she's been doing on the computer to make vegetation? <sighs> clever. She's a clever girl. I do say so myself, because, like, you know, I'm just a chip off the old block. I mean, I'm just a mini her, so if she's brilliant, I am too. Anyway, I've gathered on enough. You know, yeah, what can I say? Dock painted. Looking good. Yeah. Now you can all go off and do one too. See ya!